I created for you guys a logo, hover your mouse over there and it will change into a subscribe button. Go test it out. Good evening. So since <laughs> the last episode, I broke my arm. Um, it's a pretty bad break, but at this moment it, they think I will recover. So hopefully I will be able to pull some lines and do some winches. <laughs> We discussed uh, the main options for the 2017 Leopard 45 um, option list, which was the voltage and the full cabin, full cabin or three cabin, and then also some of the interior things. Many of the interior things we did not select um, um, because we are thinking of using Pietro's excellent interior decorating skills, <laughs> and we will make our own pillows and cushions. So some of our YouTube subscribers actually ask us what is the price. We need to actually dis disclose the price and we will. Um, for now I think we will show you the list and go through the list and you can see what is all, all the options. And then what options we selected and which ones we had to go and do a little bit of research. It's funny how we say Google instead of research lately. <laughs> But yeah, we googled a lot of options and um, so we will need to, and then afterwards we will combine all of these prices together and say this was for, for the boat um, with the factory options and then also this was the aftermarket options. So for each one of those options, some of them was cheaper to do aftermarket but like the pillows and cushions is definitely cheaper to make aftermarket but also Petru wanted to put a personal touch to those kind of things. So this week we will discuss from the 2017 Leopard 45 option list the engine drive, uh, navigations, and electronics. So I will go through this list and you will see what we selected and in some of them we actually selected for the aftermarket. So let us look at the Brampton folding prop option. With every propeller there is a shaft. So we start with a shaft and a fixed fix, fit, fixed pitch propeller is a propeller that you cannot change the pitch so it's made in a factory it's done for a certain engine for a certain weight of the boat and also for a certain speed so normally you have a speed propeller or you have a power propeller but you can very rarely have both the Leopard 45 is using a Branton prop or also known as a auto prop um, from the statistics that we will show later, it's not maybe the best prop, but um, at this moment this is what I put on. And um, I will use that as an example to explain what is a feathering prop, because this is actually a feathering prop, um, although Leopard is saying it is a folding prop. So it does have some folding capabilities, but it is actually just feathering into the water. So the way it works, um, as you can see on this diagram, so the props I have a side view of the prop and also in the left hand corner there is also a, a real picture of the prop and in this configuration it's going forward so um, you can see it's like leading edges of a 
basically like a sail or an aeroplane wing. So as they cut the leading edge cut through the water, it will actually then start pulling the boat forward or giving lift, providing lift. But it also has a, a little bit of a slanted um, uh, angle so that you also being pushed through the water. But at this moment, it's more about the pulling effect, the lift effect, and the pushing effect. If you, if the animation goes further, you will see that the animation is actually going into the neutral mode, and the neutral mode is um, where it is feathering. If you look from this side, it looks like it is, it is a folding prop. But if you look at the little picture on the left hand side, you will see that it is actually um, on the top left. It is low resistant, but you can see the fins did not really fall. The blades did not fall. The same is on the left hand corner at the bottom. You will also see that the blades is still actually quite upright. They don't fall. Um, but they cut through the water. So they will have a slight resistance, but the resistance is very minimum. Then if, you, if the animation goes further, as we go further, you will see we're going into reverse mode. And then, the, and that's why we say it's rather a feathering prop than a folding prop. It, because now as the engine starts reversing, the leading edges want to cut again through the water. So the whole blade is feathering in the, to the direction of the prop turn. And then the thrust to the back when it's reversing is the same as the thrust forward. So the forward thrust and backward thrust is basically the same and it is why the feathering props is better than the folding props. Because the folding props, I mean I've seen now many folding props um, videos on YouTube where, and I will list them in a, in a playlist. So if you guys want to go and have a look, you can have a look at the playlist on folding props. And the folding props, actually the biggest problem that I do have is that because I don't feather, they rely on the blades to be spun outwards. And as they been spun outwards in reverse, it doesn't really spin that much outwards because the reverse is not um, that effective yet. So I'm quite happy with the Branton or the Auto Prop. Um, maybe later on, if this prop is giving us too much hassles, then we will look at a different one. But if you look at the videos again, you will see that uh, the auto prop is actually turning from forward to reverse in a very fast and efficient way. navigation and electronics and this is where the fun bar starts for me um, the ones in green we selected uh, the ones in red we did not select uh, some of them is in aftermarket and the yellow ones or the golden ones is the ones that I want to discuss in more detail so obviously the music we selected and then at the bottom two one is a receiver and one is a transceiver which means the transceiver can receive and transmit and you want to have a transceiver because you want to transmit to the big boats also where you are so that they don't accidentally overrun you. The cameras, um, we, this is one of those options that we selected for the aftermarket because the camera position from the factory is not the position that we would like. We would like to see the whole port side. Uh, it is true that Pietro will not be able to see the, the, the port side bow so if we do need to dock on that side, it will be a nightmare. So we would like to have the camera on a different position so that we can see the full port side. And then the other red ones is the remote controllers um, and the additional 95 point, uh, the nine inch multifunctional di display. 
Those ones, and I, I've heard many people talking about um, that the Leopard doesn't have uh, inside a, a nav station. We actually opted not to have the nav station because we are thinking of using iPads, which is a little bit more multifunctional than just a multifunctional display. So we will use um, our iPads or uh, tablets to, to, which is wireless and which can connect to the, the Raymarine one. As you can see, uh, I will put a link down below, but it is from the Raymarine website. Um, they've got a XM, the XM, which is just a, a normal one, and an XM Pro, and then the A series. So at this moment, Leopard is installing the A series. And we looked at the, the XM and XM Pro, and at this moment, it looks like I would like to have the, 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 the Chirp Sonar and uh, that seems to be coming only with the XM Pro. The XM Pro have a couple of extra ones that I'll discuss just now. So if, if you look at the XM Pro, there's two screens, um, or two, two sizes, 9 inch and 12 inch. And I think my Ann Petrus eyesight is busy going, so we will go for the bigger one. But um, we, so the XM Pro, the one of the things that, that really draw me much more to that and as an IT guy, I cannot think how a touchscreen and water can work together, um, only touchscreen. So the XM Pro have a, at least a little button that you can also navigate. So even in rough sea conditions or sea state, you can then uh, use the button if you, cannot, if you cannot use your hands, wet hands or the wet screen anymore. So the XM Pro also come with uh, the Real Vision 3D, which I think is very new technology. And the built-in in kilo, one kilowatt chirp sonar, I'm not sure how the one kilowatt chirp sonar will work, how much um, battery it will take. But um, the chirp is actually very interesting. It's not just a sonar that's um, like the, the, the standard sonars and radar, radars is working, and I will come to the radar a little bit later, but the chirp is actually like small electronic signals that I sent out, not uh, analog signal, but a digital pulse that I sent out, which also reduces a lot on the battery life. On the radar side, um, this is, was in the beginning for me very confusing, because if I, if, when I look at the Raymarine site, they actually list the, the, the two digital radar and HD color um, radar, and then radar. So, and the Leopard options um, was showing that uh, digital, obviously is a digital more expensive and HD is even more expensive. And then when I look at the Raymarine site, there's a quantum radar, the chirp pulse compression um, type of radar, which I was, I wanted to, to have. And then um, Leopard actually confirmed that this is the radar that I put on to the, to the Leopard. So, I don't need to <laughs> worry anymore about that. So on the option list, I still have the digital and the HD radar, which is more expensive than the, the Chirp radar. So let me just show you quickly what is a Chirp radar and, and what makes that better than a normal analog radar. The obvious one is it saves a lot on electricity. So the obvious one is the, is the power usage. The power peak power output for this Chirp one is 20 watts. While the, the normal um, Raymarine digital one is the, the output power is 4 kilowatts. So that will drain, yes, you've heard me correctly. Then the, the other one that makes the Chirp actually better uh, um, not just the battery usage, but it's also the chirp, the pulse compression. Um, if you look at these diagrams, you can actually see that the chirp ones can actually see much better uh, than an ordinary magnetron radar. And it see much more details, it can also see very closer objects um, than the magnetron radar sees. So you can actually see rocks and buoys and weather cells. So one last thing that I would like to talk about is forward-looking sonar. The reason why we want it, and it's not that we, yeah, maybe we are crazy, is that we would like to go to places which is off the beaten track. Uh, we will do Bahamas, we will do Caribbean and things like that, but we also want to do places where other, the normal guys don't go. 
Um, places like Arctica and Antarctica, we want to see when there is an iceberg in front of us. It's not to say that we want to go at full speed, I mean, well, Catamaran cannot go that fast. But it's not that we're going to go full speed and go sleeping and hope for the sonar is going to wake us up. It is about we are actively sailing and actually navigating very treacherous bottom water. So this is why I would like to find. So I've looked. Um, so Garmin has it, uh, Simrat has it, Noah has it, uh, Optivision or something like that also have it. I've got a playlist. You can just go to our website and our channel and, and check. There's a playlist there for sonar. But um, Raymarine doesn't have it, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. If there's any solutions that you guys have thought about, maybe you can comment below. But for now, it seems like I will have two systems, one for the sonar, the one MFD for the sonar, and one for the general thing, the, the one for the boat. So I will need to see that, how that will work. So that's it for this weekend. Um, next weekend we will look at other things like the other options on the, on the Leopard 45 um, selection list like the voltages, the electrical things, the plumbing, heating, refrigerating, deck and, uh, deck and all. Maybe I will not cover all of that. We will see how far we can come in, in the time that we can have on YouTube. Um, but yeah, see you next week. Time for you to get out of full screen and hit the like button. And remember, our subscribe button is all the time there. Thank you very much. Support us on Patreon, like our pictures on Instagram and follow us on Facebook to become part of our social active experience.